Whenever you start a new astronomy project, at least I am faced with a little bit of a dilemma. I often wonder which is the best use of my time. Is it to take loads and loads of short exposures at a higher gain and stack all of those up and rely on the really high stacking efficiency thanks to modern CMOS cameras with very low read noise? Or perhaps are you slightly better served in terms of the end product uh, by taking longer exposures and fewer of them? Now, over the course of the past few sessions, I've been actually doing a small practical experiment in order to try and figure this out for myself. So, what I've been doing is using the setup right behind me here, that's the Celestron Rasa 8, the Player 1 Uranus C one-shot colour camera, and a simple light pollution filter, the IDAS LPS D2. I've been shooting the Cocoon Nebula with that exact same rig for uh, both sets of data, which I'm about to describe. And uh, over the past few sessions, I've gathered about 90 minutes of one minute exposures at a gain of 200, so they're gonna be my short shots. But I've also been gathering some secondary data, which is five minute shots at a gain of zero. Now, I hope to gather a few more five minute shots tonight and maybe stack them up individually, and we can take a look on the PC screen side by side and hopefully try and judge for ourselves really if there is much of a difference to be worried about at all or you know maybe there is a difference maybe there isn't but i hope to try and uh, kind of try and put it to bed a little bit tonight and stop worrying about this kind of thing so much if it makes much of a difference whatsoever so uh, i'm gonna get the roof rolled off this place now and go ahead and get started on finishing off those five minute shots for this comparison and i'll catch up with you on the pc Well guys, I'm back, it's a few hours on now from when last we spoke and I have got all the frames that I needed to finish off this last little bit of a comparison. I actually only needed a few frames from tonight to make it kind of as fair as possible and uh, I've got them so I've just continued on shooting with these five minute shots anyway and that's what I'm going to use to show you the end result after we've gone through this little bit of a comparison but I thought it might be interesting to uh, kind of take you through what the stacks look like so on the screen what you're looking at right here on the left hand side for both of these uh, versions of the image the five minute shots going to be on the left and the 60 second shots are going to be over on the right hand side now this initial kind of green tinged one this has got no background connection um background correction it's got no uh cropping no um light pollution removal or anything like that so this is just as um, Astro Pixel Processor kind of finished its stack, this is the auto save. So the initial thing that I noticed between these two is that the flats that I took um, for the zero gain setting, the five minute exposures, they've worked a lot better uh, than on the right hand side here with these 60 second 200 gain exposures. It seems like the flat correction just plainly has worked well a ton better <laughs> to be quite honest with you so if i just zoom in a little bit as well on uh, on the uh, cocoon itself it also looks like even on this preview there is more signal to be seen um at least it looks cleaner but anyway we won't focus too much on that because nobody really looks at their images that way i'd guess it's more like this so these haven't had any processing done to them other than at this point just a crop a background neutralization and a background extraction so that's all that's been done to these nothing else they're still actually completely linear data uh it's just got a automatic back um sorry <laughs> a screen transfer function applied to it keep getting myself mixed up today but yeah this is all that's been done to these so it's hopefully as fair of a test as is possible and it's 90 minutes each for both of these shots now just on the overview here Again, it looks like due to the fact that the flats worked better in the first place, there's still less gradient present on this left-hand shot, which is a nice starting point. More of that dust is showing uh, right away, I would say. Now let's begin to zoom in a little bit and we'll compare things uh, kind of up close. So we'll go maybe to a, uh, a really tight zoom, like three to one here. Let's get these into uh, a viewable position for you all. Now, that's roughly kind of similar we can take a good uh, little comparison with these now looking at the core of the nebula itself clearly i'm seeing higher signal to noise ratio on that 300 second zero gain shots so already this has been a worthwhile experiment to me because 
I, I honestly went into this expecting to find there would be practically no difference whatsoever, but in my case, definitely, I'm seeing benefits to shooting with those longer subs, absolutely 100%, and I will continue to do that, I think, now I've... Uh, kind of discovered this about using this camera on my particular optical system um also one other thing you'll perhaps know if you're looking kind of carefully at these pairs of stars so like over here the little kind of double star right there is seemingly more cleanly resolved on the uh the five minute shots so my guiding's been good throughout this whole thing so it shouldn't be down to um guiding or anything like that causing uh, tighter or sort of like fatter stars on either of these shots uh, I think it is down to the fact that the five minute shots and zero gain have got a much deeper full well depth so uh, they don't kind of uh, overexpose and begin to uh, not bloom but for want of a better explanation I'll have to kind of go with that uh, train of thought I guess um, if we just move these to a little bit of a different position so we can compare once again yep so Another thing I'm noticing right here, let's say in this background region here, if we get to uh, 5 to 1, so I know this is a pretty extreme pixel peeping scenario, but um, there's there's less um, there's less background noise, less of like a grid showing, as I'm seeing on the 60 second exposures, and certainly higher signal to noise ratio in the fainter stars in the background, so it looks like there's more of them, and they are all tighter as well, which is interesting to see, but especially kind of I think we can evidence it by looking at this little region here. So there's a uh, a group of one, two, three, four, five, six, like six stars in almost a bit of a arc position over here on the five minute shot. If you look at that same position on the 60 second shots, they they kind of almost blur into one. You can count roughly four of them, I'd say, if I'm being fair to it. Uh, but they're definitely not as cleanly resolved as in this uh, this five minute shot. So absolutely without a doubt i'm seeing better results from those longer exposures um if we just move across now and take a look at maybe just one more area uh over here should do nicely actually i've just spotted some background galaxies in the shot so i'll move these up and make them hopefully visible for all you guys um yeah it's looking like the same thing is is kind of happening everywhere really so it's not just stars it's also faint background galaxies so you can see hopefully if you can see my mouse pointer um a background galaxy there there and there. there's like a little small group going on they're just clean uh like easy to see on the left whereas on the right you can see them but um i don't know they are a little bit um muddy in appearance whereas I think I think a few more hours on both of these and the difference between them might get even more pronounced uh, I would say now the last thing we can look at I guess is the uh, actual dark dusty lanes the whole one of the whole reasons really for shooting this region I'd say so let's go to the uh, absolute top left in both shots at just a, a one to one view and um, once again I at least for my money maybe you guys have a different viewpoint looking at it with uh, different sets of eyes but it looks plainly like the zero gain longer exposures even though the total integration between these again is exactly the same it's 90 minutes in both examples um i'm getting more bang for my buck by shooting with these longer shots and um that much is absolutely plain at least in this comparison I'd love maybe to kind of test this again using a like a dual narrowband filter where I expect the difference might be even more pronounced actually um, as everything's then a little bit more photon limited. This is quite a non-discriminatory filter. It lets through lots of light. So uh, we're definitely not in a read noise limited situation here. This is certainly something else is going on. I don't quite know what, but yeah, I'm seeing better results from that. So anyway... I think uh, there's enough evidence there to prove, at least to me, that uh, I should be shooting with these longer exposures. It just makes more sense. So, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing that little comparison there, guys. And I hope you're going to enjoy seeing the end result from this uh, from this image. And um, as always, thank you very much indeed for watching, sharing your time, and all your comments. I do love reading them, so please... 
if you've got something to say do type it i will read every single one of them and i do try to reply to every single comment too because if you take the time to leave one it's only fair that i take the time to reply i uh, i love having this dialogue with you guys so i'm gonna leave it there so until next time look after yourselves thank you very much for watching and clear skies <laughs>